epidemiology is basically detective work. So tonight, I'd like to reopen the investigation of a cold case. <laughs> the outbreak of the deadly bacillus Yersinia pestis in the pandemic of 1348, otherwise known as the bubonic plague. Now, the mystery here is not how this happened. As we look at the Middle Ages, the real mystery is how this didn't happen all the time. I mean, let's face it. Public hygiene is not a priority here. I mean, what with the raw sewage and the contaminated food and the bleeding and the leeches and the flagellation and the mortification and just, just the basic lack of self-esteem. So it is a fair question why it is that it took so long, why it took until the late Middle Ages for this one pathogen to achieve such a uniquely high r naught value. This is the reproduction ratio, the ultimate variable that expresses the speed of the epidemic so much faster than the usual suspects had managed for a thousand years. Well, Okay, there's a reason for this. The European ecosystem had a firewall based in the domesticated predator, house cats and dogs whose job was to suppress the vector of the disease. <laughs> and they were in a symbiotic relationship. They had a roommate agreement where <laughs> they got food and shelter in return for wiping out the rodent enemy. <laughs> and we see them in the manuscripts depicted in these heroic action poses. <laughs> Wait for it. Up until about 50 years before the plague, when we do a statistical analysis of the cat and dog images of the early 14th century manuscripts, <laughs> as one does, we see a rising proportion of them as sick <laughs> and depressed. and psychotic. <laughs> now, there is something clearly happening in the first half of the 14th century to disable the firewall. And as we say in, in epidemiology, uh, when the cat's away, the plague vector will play. <laughs> but what is that? What's getting to these animals? Well, let's go through the checklist. Were they hungry? Nope. There's a lot of food on the trade routes of the early 14th century. This is a prosperous time. Were they cold? Nope. This is the medieval warm period. The climate <laughs> is mild and stable. So we have to ask, Was there some kind of noise pollution that suddenly attacked all of Europe in the 14th century? And, you know, now that you mention it, yes, there was. Aha! The bagpipe! First shown among Spanish gypsies in 1288. And o 
Over the next 60 years, it spreads all over Europe. After a thousand years of Gregorian chants, this is the 14th century version of rock and roll. And when we use the bag, when we use the manuscripts as data points, we can plot both density and the probability of being within earshot. And if we see the bagpipe as a plague agent, we can track it, incubating like a virus. And the Scots understood this first when they used the bagpipe as biological warfare. A noise that would make their own troops willing to die. <laughs> and the English to say, oh God, make it stop. But no one seems to have noticed the biological catastrophe that we were inflicting on our domestic animals. Hitting them at both ends of their hearing range, disrupting their neural circuits. Oh, for the love of God, what this must have done to their rat-catching ability as they begged, make it stop. But the Europeans of the 14th century had become the worst roommates ever as they blasted their rock and roll at all hours, pissing off their symbiotic allies. So when people started to come down with mysterious flea bites, oh, you think these animals are gonna lift a paw to help them? No, I don't think so. They're not out catching rats. They're huddled in the corner, shell-shocked with post-traumatic stress. And as the plague rats overrun Europe, there is no one left to fight them. And as the value of the resistance drops to zero, r naught goes through the roof. And the Europeans of the 14th century paid a heavy price for their rock and roll, because now, in hindsight, it is so obvious <laughs> that it was the bagpipes that caused the Black Death. And if my model holds, we explain so much in the historical record. The ancient Greeks, they kept dogs to kill their rats too. But then they had to go and invent this appalling double-barreled penny whistle and blast it at them indoors. I mean, what did they think was gonna happen here, right? Yeah. When the plague came back to Europe, in the 1650s, it emanated out of northern Italy. Ever wonder why? <laughs> when the Spanish influenza killed 50 million people in 1918, at least the ones that hadn't snuck out the door, <laughs> it was caused by World War I, which was caused by German nationalism, which was caused by the ultimate plague agent, Wagner. <laughs> and in closing, if the appalling heavy metal of the 1870s can incubate over 40 years into this, I shudder to think what the 1970s are about to do to us. Thank you.